Oh, we are a go on dust two. Dust one wasn't enough. We needed two. Vertigo went the way of MIBR. Now they're on. Did you say ground. dust one wasn't enough? Yeah. <laughs> we need another dust. More dusts. We need a dust moret. Who's my favorite disc golf commentator? Probably Cassie music. disc golf. Cue up the music. He's out there rocking on the on the green. What do they call it? The fairway. The green. What do they know. call it? It's disc probably golf the same course. as golf. But it's yeah. normally like in a forest, it's not like on grass. From <laughs> okay, okay, that is. What's a disc golf term? A birdie? An impressive oh, shot? Something like that. We'll have to I've learn from disc, disc golfers. We'll have to watch some dust content. Here it goes, though. They're gonna need to watch some dust two content because right now, Carpe Diem are getting washed out of this one. Big kill to find. Turtle was looking to look over the lip and do some further damage. This boost up could be spicy, but Woody's playing it safe. He's playing it safe. But it's gonna work out beautifully for him. Woody knows about his workplace safety rules, and now this is a very difficult retake to even kill it. Get a freebie here, and indeed he does. All in the class, yep. Surrounded. Tuppered down. And eliminated. MIBR. First again with these pistol rounds. They have been so good. Both pistol rounds picked up. Map number one. Win another one here. It's definitely put them in the right direction to be winning these critical rounds. Triple Scout, though, does come out for Carpe Diem. This Force Spy will look to change that tide with those last few kills. Quasi allowing him to have a rifle in towards the round. Fast Cat Boost up for Hexed. I'll have to fight this space in towards mid, but no one is there to receive. MIBR, everyone is committed out towards long, and they've already spotted and tagged down Walco. getting chased here. He lives. He lives. And this is an angle where the scout can certainly be deadly. They're bringing a second one into bear as well. Chop coming through. Oh, and there it is. Walco is waiting for that exact play. Baited the hook. And brought it on through. A second kill comes through. This is starting to get messy. This is the long fight against scouts. It's the one angle where you are really massively at a disadvantage. They're just popping off shot left, right, and center, and turtles down for the count. No, still limping. But they're at a disadvantage. And they're going to back away. They don't like this. They don't fancy this. They're backing out. But not without leaving Turtle behind for a moment. He just wanted a gun. Okay. Gotcha. Where do they go with this? So yeah, that's the question. You could try and double back lower Tansu Beta. They have a smoke too, in fact. So could try and work this one through mid. Try and isolate that B pipe. That would probably be the best call, but... They don't know where anyone is. They only really spotted, I believe, two players out towards A. That was enough to make them push on away, though. Put down these smokes for the cross, but they're walking straight back in towards the scout. We know how potent Walco can be. He's on the right angle here. Finds a shot just to tie, but again, it's this damage. So many players are low. And now that M4 is all the more potent. One down, though. That's hexed on the floor. Another to fall. It's Walco down. Now this gets ten times more difficult. This is a retake. And you need heroics. God, see, I might just do it. It's a 1v1 close up. It's like, Exit needs to find this frag, and he will. Is it so? Oh, absolutely! Exit finds it. The clutch to just nearly save the round for MIBR. Two points of health, a 4K, exit, a shot through the box would have done him in, a pistol shot through the box would have done him in. Oh my goodness, what a missed opportunity for Carpe Diem, and they're immediately going to go back into a buy. They are so upset to have let this one slip through their fingers, but they're going to try again. Uh, Glass Cannon M4 is an interesting one for Classia here. Very Three steps out as well. But we'll see if they go back into the long fight, right? Because they really did set themselves up uh, to be picked apart by scouts the last round. And this time, I don't imagine they're going to try that again. Shall we just whiff the hinge smoke? He whiffed the hinge smoke. He did. Awkward. All good, though. Shouldn't have too many implications, at least not yet. They're really going long again. That's gonna be scary. I suppose they don't know what investment has come on out, and it's pretty much they know the same there's one round. scout. That's all they know so far. Yeah, well, they're about to find Butter's one of them. Good. 
That's a scout they know. What about the scouts they don't? Because these weapons could still be potent if the util isn't good. But uh, there's a better investment for this round, so thereby a safer hit if they do want to push this one out towards long. Two scouts, though. It's a high-low. Yeah, you understand it's read, right? Because you normally just do this. Oh, there's the tag. Hex can't get away, though. Oh, he does? He does? And Wiz with two? It's all falling apart. He's locked down Catwalk now. They have a bastard to defend from. Any players that towards long can be picked apart by the scopes. Exit. A wounded exit. And a full HP turtle need to try and bring back the turtle more in a 2v4. But Surely not. He's already going a long way to doing so. Surely, maybe. It's looking bad. Classy doesn't have armor. Reminder. And M4 is going to be tough to make work here in shop. Well, he's got a mat 10 at range. It might get caught in the side to test this, but they double peek it. Still, Classy has the kill. It's now known. He's got to do all the work himself, and for now, it might be about buying time. Well done, but not able to get the second this time. Carpe diem, drag it through. Only just, just barely. But they do manage to salvage the round. That is a tough one for MIPR to be losing. Respect to Colossi to be able to clutch that up in the one versus one and save the round, but they knew there was a scout. They suspect that it's pistols around it, so try and invest towards long. I still don't really agree with the call there. Like, even if it was pistols, they're still likely to invest into Deeks. You know how potent this team can be. I don't think giving them the aim battles out towards long is ever going to work well. Truthfully, that wasn't the thing that really hurt them. It was towards Catwalk. The pop-off from Wiz still... Maybe not the perfect read in that one. It happens, though. They'll still have an investment. It's rough around the edges, but we've seen these guys get stuff done for both of these squads. Again, it's MIB. They'll take their early long control. Classy's already got a pick. Yotes is down towards lower. So they've got the pit, but what will the pit avail them? <laughs> Apparently a lot right here. Walko peeked out, but this time he didn't have a scout, and that was his mistake. Just keep buying scouts, Walko. Now it's Only scouts, scouts on the other foot. The team with everyone knows the team with the most scouts in a round wins the round. Oh, this is gonna be such a good position for Classia though. They're rotating in towards tunnel. They have no information. He's pushing the envelope a little bit though. Rough here lines him up, knocks him down to nearly the third as well. Gives his team information, knows that the bomb is there. Still a minute on the clock, so they certainly don't have to commit, but Wiz wants to get aggro on the angle, and that flashbang. Well, I was going to say it could be messy, but no, not really. So Cello runs back now. Woody is still towards top mid. I imagine they switch the guns here. And try and see what they can get done. There it is. Swap on over. Scout for Cello now. It will be this re-hit back, but they're splitting up. This is an interesting one. Cello will commit over towards long. Maybe just try and sell this one. He has a molly for his teammate to work off of, but this is in towards mid. The critical and the right call is made from the CT there. Chop does not engage and out towards on the engagement one for Carpe Diem, so it's just poor Woody alone. He was already spotted towards mid. There's no time left on this clock. Round is over. Hmm. Just gonna have to save it. That one stings for the economy as well. Uh, and it's a prime missed opportunity, right? Uh, because Carpe Diem only limped through that last round with one player surviving, there was a huge chance to economically reset them here. And now that slipped you by. You're going to have to take the eco in this round. Maybe force pistols around this just to get everyone on the same page money-wise. Uh, but it's not going to be a, a, an ideal situation. Here's a real chance for Carpe Diem to start to build up the CT side. I just put a utility. They'll leave Woody on, presumably on towards the scout. Uh, if... They can't convert here. Maybe even if they do. Maybe even. Well, that aforementioned rifle will be working out towards mid. Wiz is here, and he's holding such a tight line. The read of what could be going on is correct. Can he find a frag? Surely he doesn't miss that. Somehow, within the flash, within the chaos, he finds the one pixel. They contain no play. So time to reestablish on this line. And he only hits the hard oh, ones. Attack. Connection onto exit. Through the wall. Down to 2 HP he goes. My goodness. The move was on even. But it was. And now he's okay. going looking for more. He's done so much damage into this round already. Only one kill to show for it just yet. But they'll try and come retrieve that gun. They do get it. But 2 HP, what they can do. Just try and get lucky. Why not? <laughs> just been tagged now as well. These pistol players just being whittled down bit by bit. They're going to have no limbs left by the time they actually go in towards the site. 
Seems like Catwalk's going to be the antidote, fortunately yeah. for them. Wiz has given up the angle in towards mid. There's actually a chance at a bomb plant off of this based on how far off Walker's playing this. And now Exit gets a kill in mid. This gets weird. 30 seconds. They're going to double back towards call? B instead. Yeah, there's only one player here. Has to be the LO for Chop. But his opponents, they are low on HP. This round really does fall to Jello. He can win this frag. It's big. And now it's just him. 1-2 for Chop. Third will not come. That's a bomb plant. At very least, is in a clutch. That'll be soon to be found. One player spotted. That was over towards the cross. Famas dropped down and M4 recovered. But there is no utility bar 1 HT that has already been expelled. So Jello has an opportunity. But through the box, Walco does deny the jump in. To create the space and the round to be won. Considering the investment, though, it is impressive that that gets as close as it was, especially considering the performance by Wiz. Mm. I'm already gonna call. I'm gonna call this a win for MIBR. Realistically, right? Getting the bomb plant out of that, doing that much damage. Now they have another prime opportunity uh, to to break the economy for Carpe Diem. Right? You're gonna see a, a near full reinvestment here. One more kill for Cello would have been incredible. He nearly had it. This is gonna be tough. Shello with the timing with the spawn. WP not going to find home. They will find long. We've seen mixed results once they've taken this space, and well, this time they'll certainly have it. Won't be contested at all from the Carpet DM side. This certainly could long turn feels into a mid push. Like player going yeah. in towards lower player off catwalk. Is this a mid push from Carpet DM? Interesting. It is indeed. Look at the space. So much. And no one to contest just yet. There is a player top mid, so if Klausia bites off more than he could chew, this could get a little rough, but he's not overcommitting to this one. He'll just hold close on this off angle. That's so much information. You see the adjustment. That means someone can push up towards the lower comes. Hello, does he clear chopped? Absolutely not. Off angle, nets him one, and because he still has that teammate in mid who can rotate to support, he does not even have to lead. This will bait Yota in towards a fight out long, which is against that AWP of Wiz. Will he go for it, though? He's waiting for now. Has a teammate deep in Woody to hold for him. And Yota backs away. What is the call for MIBR? Looks like they'll put down the smoke towards Xbox. Maybe re-hit this one in towards an ace, but they already have that space in the pit. And they've left their opera there. The other three players, the other three players, will work their way towards Cap. They found Walco. That opens up this ace play. Turtle, another huge second kill. Locked on all that positioning. But they've lost Woody out towards long, so where do they want to go with this? What's the read? They found the AWP with their lives. And it seems like they're going to funnel back in towards B late. That Molotov in mid might tip everybody off. Classy is playing from off the side. He's going to come back around and swing just in the nick of time. Does he get they one don't have time. more? They don't have time. They've been shut down. It's over. It's done with. Exit has to save, and he will back away. That's a tough one. I, I didn't hate the decisions in towards the mid round for for MIBR. They they start things off. I think they have a pretty good reaction to losing a player in towards a ton. Take the time to reclear. They just do it a little bit too slowly, and then the critical switch up is that kill in towards the player pit, forcing them to rehit in towards that B site, which is too little time left on towards the clock. So four to two now. Carpe Diem finding some big momentum. All right, we're not going to get an investment in this, I guess. Okay, no, it is going to happen. I was holding my breath for this. It's just going to be Deagles. That's fine. Uh, interesting decision. Let's see where they go with it. Three Deagles does kind of have me terrified. Just fear those MIBR Deagles for sure. Yeah. And they're going to go fast up Catwalk. Too. They're just going to barrel in. None of these slow plays. None of these mid-round okay. calls. They're just going to yeet themselves through and delete Wiz. They've got the Catwalk pressure on for Walco. He needs to be careful here. Those Deagles are deadly at this angle. And they've gained the sight. He doesn't want to tango with them. He wants to back right off. They've still got Catwalk control. They've got a bomb plant, maybe. This is a disaster for Carpe Diem. Oh, and it's starting to look like one. A series of events required and thus far. Those boxes have been picked 4v3, and it's made even better. Yota recovered up, hits on to Hex, but Chop's still fighting the all. He's healthy. Is there a boost up here? Yota considering it, and now he'll commit to it. 
Waits just around the corner, but that just shows his head. What he should be known in this position. Off of that boost, he should be realized. And there's a smoke for the bomb. This gets difficult because Cello still just has a deagle. And Shot will hold on towards this one, whereas the denial not yet to come. The deagle spam is missing. The defuse comes through. And Waltko holds on tight. Too damn close off the deagles, but still around for the CTs. Salvation in the form of Chop and Walco. That was so messy. I, my goodness. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit of overextension there from Exit, peeking back in towards CT, peeking over the lip, giving his life up. That's sort of the first uh, domino that leads to Carpe Team getting back into that round, but still, just the aggressive play, the momentum play, the rapid move up Catwalk catches Carpe Diem slipping, and they nearly give up that round. What a recovery. But it represents another prime opportunity because, again, Carpe Diem have not been able to build any bank here on the CT side. So they are deathly afraid of dropping this one round. If they drop mm. one round here, they're in the poorhouse. They are. They've been kept accountable. That's MIBR for that one. X might have a play here. Plays towards the close corner, but the Molly deals with him. Back away, he's so this pit presence should be read into. Long control is going to be tough for MIBR, so they don't commit to it. Instead, they keep these players in towards a catwalk and leave themselves options in the mid round. We detected weakness out towards cat. Maybe this could be the attempt again for Wiz. They'll be playing from the car this time. It's a little bit more passive, a little bit further back, and obviously they're not just going to race down with Deagles. So an opportunity here for the opera to show his quality. To step up. They could use it. All problems will make his life uncomfortable, but he'll preemptively smoke to give him a little cover to operate around. They're spamming on through. They've got the lineup. They're wise to his game. They're wise to his tricks. Walco with one, but he needs more. And he's doing exactly that. Walco takes three. And an advantage for his team as well. That bomb has to go down now. And it will, but just barely. Yota, the last survivor, and he doesn't last much longer. Another one of these rounds. He gets so, so close. But Carpe Diem pulling it off in towards the retake. And well, it's mostly just Walco. Huge performance out of him. He plays around the fringes of the smoke. And finds the damage, finds the frag, shuts down the play completely on the MIBR camp. I, I think that was the right decision. They, they recognized that there was a weakness towards a catwalk, but long control, it was pivotal. Two players were still there. They had spotted at least one towards the dumpster. were unaware that there could be a second in that position towards long. So it's pretty much three CTs ready to receive immediately. Bomb plant means there's money. So a reinvestment through and still fragile economy for Carpe Diem. These rounds have been so, so close. Seems like it's going to be a straightforward B execute. Like they are trying to simplify here, trying to make it a little bit easier. They try and execute on through. There's the one for one, but there's still a player back in sight. Still classy. I mean, he's been a monster so far this game. He's staying alive. Well, Waze has come into support. Now they're doing the damage. Yota will find one. He's the last survivor, and he's being peppered down in the smoke. A big round for Wiz to step on up, and they find a seventh. It has not been easy for Carpe Team. Every one of these rounds has been pressured, but finally, they uh, managed to convert one with three alive, and at this point, they've got a five-round buffer to, to build upon. They do, but they're not out of the woods just yet. And this round... Well, it's the Deagles. And we know how good those have been for MIBR throughout this series. Will be a heavier play towards B early on. Three players stacked up in that direction. They want to try and pick something out. Maybe re-hit this bomb late towards A. Or is this more just a matter of clearing towards slower tons? There has been a player here in so many rounds. They've realized that. And they want the punish. The question is... Plus, yeah, hold. The boost up for Yotzi. He's trying to clear towards the catwalk. Spots nobody... Is there and now to swing forward. Classia in a good position to thrive. The Molly to give him space. That's a free opener. No one in a position to punish him. So much room for Classia. And saying that he's continuing to pressure forward. I don't know what that shot was. I think that might have just been a little misclick. 
And they're going to provide him a carpet of smokes with which to retreat. Well, maybe. He spotted a player. Maybe not. That one got a little bit weird, but Classia will be dropped regardless, and his gun's now out towards the cow walk. That can be salvaged. That's another rifle given on over. You definitely didn't want to do that here. Woody should yeah. maybe share that with one of his teammates since he's the only player without armor. Maybe. maybe. There we go. He figured it out. He did. So now I exit and Yota both with these weapons to work with. Smoke across. They're again trying to work this one towards the A. So that's probably to allow the drop down. That's immediately punished. Yota taken down. That was Hex to find the frag. So Walco on the site is yet to be spotted. He is in a position to thrive here. Eagles notice him, but towards long there's support. That time is so low. You have to move on to the plan. At this point, round's already over. Bomb falling to the ground. It's so too are the players. Three left alive. Another round that comes down to the wire, but another win for Carpe Diem. MIPR, man, they're throwing these looks, right? But they're just not getting it. Everything's coming back into, a, you know, a pretty straightforward execute. It's a catwalk play. We've seen B play. We've seen long. Uh, and since the guns have come out, they just have not been able to find purchase. There's a lot of rounds where they put someone in an uncomfortable position for Carpe Diem, but the individuals are stepping forward for Carpe Diem. We've seen Walker with a couple big individual rounds on that A site. Kalasia obviously has been a menace for MIPR to deal with over towards the other. Uh, and it's just, it's it's working. Having those sort of anchors, those those pins upon which everything else can revolve for Carpe Diem is giving them a lot of room to work with. It really has, but to put things into context again, that, that was just the eagle one. Investment comes through again. They've taken their pause. What's the call? What's the decision? They've tried the faster pace runs. They've tried slowing it down, and when they slow it down, they slow it down. Lethargic, to say the least, but this time, spacing all the That's gained it out towards Mitchello. He's having himself around. We needed a step up for MIBR, and it has now been found still. It's Wiz, and he's been good in this game, and the hop in a good position to find this frag, but that smoke soon to fade, and it could be pressure from behind. His teammate will bail him out for now, so MIBR reset in the mid round. Some of these confidence plays from Classy as well are huge. Just moving around the map, getting aggressive, taking the space. Hex is going to be a tough spot here at Elevator. I think wrapped upon. Turtle looking for it from long. And Yota coming from the catwalk. Could use some support, but there's none available. There's none close at hand. And he's going looking. Hex is going looking into this fight, and he'll be down for it. He's dropped. Bit of a catastrophe there. Ball making its way on over and shot in the back is one, but that's all on to Classia. And this time, Turtle will get the best of him. No heroics for Classia in this round. It might be our find their third. That they do. The question now is can they convert momentum off of this? Because they are in a position where their opponent's economy is brittle as ever. Do they even invest in this round? No. They do not. Is this live? It is. It is indeed live. I, so. I was a little weirded out for a second based off the play with the USPs. But it does look like things are live in well. The guns are alive and feisty for Carpe Diem. USPs find a frag. The gun is recovered off of that. So, now. He's going forward. He's going yeah. forward. Oh, that's so spicy. He knows he needs to make a bold play here. And bold will be exactly what Hex does. That's the alt now drop all kinds of weird they kind of swap spots here but as the player comes out long and suddenly there's another gun to work with 3v2 here great deal play this one in towards the retake and crucially they have no really hex position has already been revealed this op is a world away out towards long this one really should just be a save it could be yeah absolutely wizard's positioning seems to tip it off and Hex will back away, but considering he did this with a pistol, this is kind of bonkers. Drops a pistol, grabs the AK, battles his way through the smoke, drops an AWP, salvages that for Wiz as well. It's been a quiet game for Hex, but this is a heck of a round to find a pair of kills and with them, a pair of guns. Solid all things considered. And I like that call. Very conservative. We, we know that this team 
isn't always one to take those big risks economically. They don't in this round. So, solid standing in towards this round. Even if they want to double up, they could invest into that. But just dropping across those rifles instead will be that decision. MIBR will be looking for the peak towards mid. He'll find the tag there, but nothing more. Yota, again, it's back towards this heavy blow control that MIBR loves. This time, no one to contest. Bit of an awkward smoke. Big ol' gap for it. Might be to isolate the peak and allow them to jump in towards pit, but I suspect it was just a bit off the corner. Flash is on over. They do have this space. You know, they do have the pit control as well. This is what we saw them trying to work at the beginning of the half. Didn't have great results. As the scoreboard does tell the story. But uh, this time, a little bit less of a contest from Carpe Diem. A potential pressure on towards text. He's got a teammate out towards Cat. He's got Classia rotating from spawn, but Classia's low. Can't really stick around into this fight. And now Hex is in a tough spot on a bit of an island. Has to make a maneuver. Has to try and bail himself out with utility. But find some damage. Find some impact. Turtle takes his teammate out of play. Bodies are here. The rotation is on. There is a lurk still coming from the tunnels as well. So MIBR might be motivated to slow up a tick and see what exit can find. Decision, but so too can Carpe Diem wait to get nervous and even more so as Hex does fall. Ooh, he's just spam away. The angle's found. Cello realizes the possibility of converts. His flank is still being worked upon, and Cello is finding more in the sight. Whiz tries to amble up, and the flank comes to her. Chop is alone in this one and exit his molly off. Exit. will shut it down as well. No way out for Chop. It's 5 to 8. Now the round score. And my BR have built back into this half in a big way. That they have. Shrunk the lead for sure. Three in a row will do that for you. And Carpe Diem on the back foot again. A scout going to come out here. So maybe back to the winning ways of those swifter scopes. But hey, considering the commanding lead they had, considering how much control they had, this is a bit of a disaster. They certainly open the door back up to MIPR on their own map pick and half switch. We could see issues. Cello entering with that off. His scope is bigger. Now the path towards A is pretty much free and clear. There's a push up mid but with someone just waiting in spawn. Yeah, Yota's going to get the better of that one. No more cheeky plays through mid. Going to work out for you. Let's see what Hex does. Oh, he finds it. Hex gets a gun and now it's going to be a game of IDAK. They'll get away with that one. It would appear Wiz. He can probably go poking with this scout. See if he can deal any more damage. Maybe scamper away with a weapon of his own. But this round it's all but over. MIBR again when they realize they have the advantage in guns. They tend to just take these fights out for this long. And despite what the early game might make you think. Most of the time they're winning them. Wiz will fall down. But I don't think anyone is close enough just yet to punish Hex. However plentiful time and plentiful money to commit to the hunt. I'm going to say he gets away with this one. He's admiring the skin. He's enjoying it. Blood sport. Nice and clean. No stickers. It's a solid skin. Here's my question, Mimi. Does he kick the soccer ball? So. No, he's too worried. Goes for no ball kick. Could have given his position away, to be fair. Not feeling the whimsy in this round. No joys whimsy to be had. Double up early? Triple up early? Let's see. Do they get something on the cross? That's a question. Cello. Host it up. Two players on it. And they don't get anything out towards long, though. This is a heavy fight that Hexed was not prepared for. They'll just leave now. And maybe I'll have other options. How about you do charge one player forward? That's classy. And that's a ton of information. How are they too late on the rotations? Because mid control, that's Garner for MIBR. No one to hold the cross, though. And someone holding the deep push. Classia. Bit off more than he can chew. Turtle takes him on down. So now a 5v3 with still a minute 30 on the clock. It's bonkers to me that at one point there were five ops in hand between the two sides. They might be are making use of their excess capital. But at this point, now they're just using the rifles to seal the deal on this one. Wiz in Chop. One of them's going to need to step up heroic if they're going to be able to do this. And it won't be Chop. He's been caught by Yota coming out of the tunnel late. I'm not even sure why they're taking this space towards spawn. They've got... All the control of the world, and there's no reason to hunt down this last gun. 
Now they know where Wiz is. How do they respond? How do they react? Bomb's planted. Wiz in a very hopeless situation. And he will quickly be extinguished. We'll be back after this break. Well, it was looking commanding there for Carpe Diem for a hot second, but five rounds in a row to close the half will really change the formula on that one. Tends to do so. So, they're straight back into things, and need we remind you that thus far, MIBR have had a flawless streak of pistol rounds. Three out of three within the series. If they can grab another here, that would do big things for catapulting them in towards the lead and in towards the possibility of a 2-0. And what could be an upper finals match. Carpe diem, though. In this one, they'll work out towards mid. The Glocks don't chip away at anything just yet. If this play has been telegraphed, how many players here to stop them? And now nobody in position to deny. Exit in a bit of trouble. He does go with one frag and falls away. Holds his position. It's long with the lurk. Oh, it punishes. Turtle goes on down. So three versus four. Bomb plans with this retake feels impossible, especially if Woody falls. He's already down. Exit has no HP. He's out towards long. This round should not be won. And we'll just take one bullet to ensure that back to exit. What an opportunity. And he will not receive it. A P250 shot to the head. So the first pistol round win. But our PDM comes just at the right time. Just run for a little tumble down the ramp. Just a little roll. Did you ever just yeet yourself down grass hills as a kid? Roll down an old knoll. Mm. No? Think, On occasion? Think. Okay. I was thinking. I was thinking. You know, I was just taking in taking in all the information. You're like, man, the head trauma from the last time I rolled down a hill at full speed. Uh, <laughs> it's erased it's the really memory. hitting in. It, it's really hitting in. It, it is erasing my memory. But. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I like the yeah. play from Turtle. That was spicy. Yeah, I like it. Confidence, make an attempt at it. Uh, it's fun, you know, rolling down a hill. Don't, I just go, I'm gonna go roll down a hill after this game, I think. <laughs> That's my new plan. Thanks, Mike. Go find a hill. Yeah. Roll down it. Instead of instead of saying touch grass, I'm gonna start saying go roll down a hill. Go roll a hill. Go roll a hill. Go roll a grassy knoll. When we were kids, uh oh, oh. uh oh. We're fine. Mimi, you're gonna have to take this for a second. Yeah, this might get a little bit, little bit funky. Cause MIBR, well, they could have a chance at this one, as it is just this 3v5 on the work back in. The issue is, we have no utility to work with, and they are not in the best positions. Exits do seem to be the better idea for them, and will exit is a man to hold down in that regard. Carpe Diem, however, they've realized that this round should already be theirs, and they look to head their way out towards the hunt. Asya. Oh, he hears them. They are so, so loud. And he'll find one. The trade is there, but losing... That MAC-10, not the biggest of deals. It reveals where these final two CTs are. And you can at least send one more player to try and contest. Terrorists win. Oh, good. And Looks like we might have All right, I'm back lost in. Mike. I'm As back I say in. that, the magician returns. 
I don't know what happened there. Yeah, well, what you happened was... Mix shows. What happened was things got not that weird whatsoever. Or spy around for MIBR, find a little bit of damage, save a couple weapons on through. Not too much more than that. Carpidium had a nice execute towards B. That's what we're looking for. Certainly, if Carpidium are looking to pull back up that fast rate, once the guns come out, it'll be a different story. And look at one more free from that moment. Did see some of these rounds get away from them on Vertigo. Can't be having that here. Cello has a cheeky spot. Oh, Cello has a cheeky spot indeed. Right now, Hex is holding for it, but timing going to be everything. I don't believe Cello was spotted getting into this corner, but Hex is going to come in to clear it, so maybe he was. Yeah, and indeed, Hex is wary of it. Wary of the possibility, and he'll deal with it just fine, but exit into it is a different story. One and done. He's okay. Carpe Diem at this point have the entire B side of the map open for business. Well, they won't realize it yet, but as they start to clear in towards the site, it's a free B. A free B of B. Mm. Mm. Free yeah, I don't think B. MI Barra will even really want to go for this one. They'll hold on to the weapons that they have yet again and hope that they can find some damage. This hunt. It is an interesting one, though, right? Wood, Woody's armor is worth saving. Sure. I suppose you can justify using a scout going forward. The Mac 10 is certainly not worth having. And at some point, you'd imagine they're going to send Turtle on a mission to try and retrieve that gun that was dropped in towards mid. Uh, actually, that's the Mac 10. No, the Mac 10 made it through from last round. Never mind. They should go looking for that. But it seems like they're going to commit everybody to keeping this setup alive. And I'm not quite sure. Why? Mm. I suppose it doesn't matter too much that those guns are kept. The intact could be big, but I doubt it. One scout, one Mac 10. They probably won't even want to use They're it. They're going to the double op. All right, never mind saving the scout. Double op out here. It's all getting spent for MIBR. They're rolling this one on through. It will save nothing, Mimi, whatsoever. That's curious. I, I would almost expect them to maybe pull out one up here, have that scout as a secondary, post them up. I mean, you can put it together with a rifle, get that tag, follow up. There's your upgrade, but they are taking the risk. MIBR, they like to do this from time to time, make these riskier plays with the economy, try and see what they can get done off of it, and that's exactly what they've done here. Now the question is, where do they position these ops? Because Woody has had a slow game thus far. We, we talked about him. It's one of the win conditions for them. On this map, Cello has definitely picked up the slack, especially towards the second part of that half. But this is Woody's opportunity to show what he is made of. He's one of the ops, will head its way over towards long in the secondary. Towards pit, so post it up together in this one. Excuse me, actually, it's on Cello instead over towards mid. Uh, misread on the mini map, but a read into where at least one of these ops are for Carpe Diem. The second still not spotted or known about in this round, it's currently the priority of the game. Just give you an update on some of the other games real quick. Uh, Pain have two owed stripes, so they'll be waiting for mm. the winner of this one in the upper bracket final. Down below, ATK's up one map over Party Astronauts, but Party Astronauts are up in the second, and Game of Gladiators are up in the second map with a map already won, and Orglis are facing elimination. That's your update from the other streams, and now back to this round. This round, I see some smokes in towards mid. Lots of smokes in towards mid. This seems to be a pinch into the B site with two players here, including an AWP. It's a pretty well defended site indeed. No util though. No. And well, not too much on the other side either. Smoke and a flash for the sexy to Molly can go somewhere, but I don't think it'll flush out any of these players or not. Where that Molly would like to be sent, but a crucial miss. Cello. On HP, he's in trouble here, especially as exit falls. A double entry, but he does reply back through the crack. That's the issue of having no smokes towards the execute. But with 25 seconds left, this is a site taken towards B, and with no so utility, safe. MIBR cannot even commit to it. That is a heartbreaker for the Brazilians. I mean, even with util, with that little map control, without clears in towards mid, with the number deficit, you'd never, you really never fancy that B site unless you absolutely had to. So a huge round for Carpe Diem as they expand their lead to five. That might be R. Well, 
considering how expensive that investment into the double op is, even saving these three guns, it's going to be tough to put much around them. They were wishing they'd kept the scout up this time. But no. They wanted to make a big impact into this round, and unfortunately it didn't quite go They can drop guns. They can get a buy up around this. Utility won't be perfect. But it'll be viable, and indeed that's what they're going to do. Invest another risk taken. See if we can net them anything. If they lose this round, that money will be crippled. And it will likely be in third map. This could be the spin point. Hang on. Stays even. Both ops missing. Woody gets away with things just narrowly, but his teammate not so lucky. Yota tried to support, but dies in doing so. And his also has been tagged on down. There's still an issue in mid cello. He tucks close, plays the anti flash. Now, on the extremity. Turtle has worked for This fight could be massive. It's a pinch. If Cello can delay, this fight could go big. One player already lined up. The second should be soon to come. But Turtle is bitten off maybe more than he can chew. The damage was dealt, but the frags, no. Not yet. From behind, though, this Turtle again. A secondary frag, but out towards his big site. An execute is coming. And the bomb has made it across. Cassia punishes onto Woody, but the trade is there. Plant not to be committed just yet, but an opportunity for Hex to win this. 1v3 within the clutch. He has information onto one, but he's being wrapped ever so quickly. And Turtle should have the angle, should have the opportunity to shut this on down. Hex will find one more frag, but it takes just a nade to finish that one on out. MIBR take another risk, but they have reward. Losing Turtle, though, that really stinks, right? It, it's a world of difference, three alive and two alive. And, and that's yeah. really going to hurt them in terms of the reinvestment coming through here. Carpe Diem. It's not a bad round to lose. It's, I, I mean, obviously, you'd prefer not to get completely flanked out by Turtle and shut down. Uh, but if you're going to lose it, if you're going to look rather silly doing so, this is a good way to do it. You got tons of money to reinvest. You know your opponent's emptying their pocketbook, bankrupting themselves to make this happen. And you've still got a four-round lead to fall back on. So if you can execute here, if you can get one through here, boom, we might never see uh, MIBR's money fully recover. Got a bit in reserve. To be fair, and that loss bonus is still largely built up. But you get into that awkward situation where there's limitations and buys. It's an important round for MIBR. A huge potential swing here. Even if they win this, they're not out of the woods economically, right? Carpe Diem, their pocketbooks run deep. Lower control being taken. There's presence on Cowwalk, but MIBR, they don't want to stick around and maybe get a little bit more timid. We're not seeing that characteristic CT aggression. Obviously, last round, they went for it. They sent it. And Turtle found a huge flank, but this time, it's time to chill back. Just double hop set up. I'll look to send at least one of those big greens to re-clear in mid. Uh, utility for Carpe Diem, though, is still solid, so circumventing that scoped weapon. Certainly a possibility. It looks like they do want to hit this one in towards an A split. Primarily from the catwalk. Four players will come there and late reflank in towards the long. If that player lives or dies, that could change the course of this round. And it's Walko in position. No, it's not catwalk. Instead, towards mid, they'll have to go, but it's a first op. Tested success on both fronts from IBR as they pick off three. Walko and Colossia alone as it's cut down to now a single player. They took another risk. They grabbed this double up. They got the secondary one for free. And the reward is there. Carpe Diem down to just one player and Waltko with a time at 15 seconds is locked out completely. They save him. Gotta do it. His kit's certainly valuable. Rifle, armor, util available. But that one's gonna stink for Carpe Diem. That was a huge opportunity to shatter the hopes of MIPR to all but lock up a map number three, and instead the Brazilians live. They survive! And they're ready for it. This is like the uh, the meme of, of the guy in the hospital bed sending out the selfie that just says, I lived. Yeah. It's MIBR right now. I lived. The cast is still fresh on their leg. They're still waking up. From the sedatives. They're not feeling too droggy anymore. Mm -hmm. Droggy? I don't think that's the word. Drowsy. Droggy, I think. 
Groggy, drowsy. You blend. You were just you blended fucked. them together. Wake up. We Draggy. got a new one. Pause will come to a close. Carpe Diem have made their decisions around the money, and investment is the solution. You tell Solid they're good to go in this round. And they'll be going. Now towards Long. Good spawn for it. The likes of Chopped. But there's already the util forward. He doesn't want to try and that's that double off. He doesn't want to try and commit. It's not actually an off. It's total instead in this position. It's still blinded. He finds impact. Trade is there, though. That's good. To be able to take this long control. That's exactly what Carpe Diem wanted, and now they have it. Will they just continue to sit out towards it? They've lost control everywhere else on this map, but have to commit a lot of resources on the reclear. So the state hit feels inevitable. They don't have smokes for the cross. They've just got a single smoke. Mm. Their other one was already down, so if that fades... It's going to be bad. They're only going to be able to smoke one. They'll have to jump across. Nice timing on the nade. Doesn't actually do that much. But are we going to see a run boost through here? That's what I'd imagine is going to happen. A boost on the hand of this bottom player. Damage is there, but a kill will not. And spam back the other way makes it very uncomfortable. Now what he can be. Now it starts to get messy. The spam through the smoke is tearing them asunder. It's all falling apart. That bomb is down. Once those smokes are gone, if that bomb is still out in the open... Oh my, this gets tough for Carpe Diem. Indeed, I think it is. Don't retrieve it just in the nick of time. That smoke does fade. But there's a flank. We'll Look at exit. It there is. You're right. Absolutely. But Wiz looks too. He read it. He's there for it. I don't know what tipped him off, but he was ready for the moment. I think catches them. And Yota takes one. Oh, just to this man, Walco. The Indian leader has to do it all himself. He'll peek over to try and find his fight. He'll take the first. Getting down to the 1v1 clutch. Tagged up in turn, and Yota repositioning. Trying to avoid the peek out, but Walco's baiting for this peek. Baiting for this check, and there's the spot. Information gained, only 8 seconds. Walco has to commit. Yota expecting the fight to come on over, but this time, he's miscalculated. He's misjudged. Walco might just get the spot over his head's exposed! What a bit of positioning out from Yota to recognize that if he extended just a bit further back for the temporary, he'd be able to find the head. And he does. Tenth round now. This gap lessening. It might be our again in these tough situations. Fighting back in. Working these comebacks into more and more of reality. Considering the circumstances, though, it, it was good for Carpe Diem to even get in that position. The awareness for Wiz to find that shot, but it's the timing from Yota. It is the individual prowess from him to hold things on, and that's the breaking point. Carpe Diem, their money is gone. One weapon, that's all there is to work with in this round. It's Walco, so uh, maybe a chance at something big. Chop wants to just send it through this smoke. I think it's really weird here. There's a CT on the other side, and Yota and Chop is holding. He's waiting, and now he's found his opportunity. He's found his pound of flesh, and Yota is so damn low. It'll take just one shot to finish still for all that turmoil. What if they gained long? But now Woody's here. He's reposted. He knows, or at least suspects, that a player is trapped in towards that left side. And the utility is only flashes to get him back across. Off on the angle shot will connect, and that's the bomb. A critical vector in this round. And over towards mid, Cello's op two connects. It's shot now. He's found his entire base, and the op shot, it misses. So an opportunity to recover the bomb and to play his own game. I think Woody rolled a one on that one. Critical yeah. failure. It's all gonna be on the chop now. 1v2. Give himself a prime opportunity. This would be the ace in it as well. I'm trying to cover him on the cross, but Cello, not blinded, not flinching for a second, shuts that hope down. Shuts down the dream of the hero round, and now MIBR had brought this back just within one. No bomb planned here, but money still available means that Carpe Diem will be bringing the fight through once more. And the double op is reinvested into. They're going for this. They're making all the waves that they can. And they're sparing no expense to try and get this back to an even scoreline. This Three feels like Molotovs right off the rip for MIBR. Top mid, long, deep in tunnels. They are not sparing that early util. Do they want to take this fight in mid? There's a flash over. And an opportunity for Wiz to establish on the line. Cello tries to reapproach, fails. The wall bank won't connect either. Yota wanted to see if he could follow up on his tag, but tag there was none. Wiz will again reestablish. 
an even deeper line this time. That off has been hurt. It's been realized, but this smoke allows them to get deep. And now that B defender in exit could be in trouble. If Carpe Diem do make the decision to head that way instead, they've doubled back. Put this pressure on towards the catwalk now, but it's Woody, and he has the AWP. It has been a market increase for him in this half, and now that should force the hand straight in towards this off. But in the moment, he could have found success. The clone is shot misses, now falling away. A secondary angle out towards the ramp, and now we have this. The player to hold has to go big, has to hold on for Woody to find an opportunity, but these shots, they just keep on missing. The support of utility is good, but Woody is in so much trouble, and he will eventually fall. Out towards long, though, an update on that fight it's turtle to win it on out so space guard at least on one front carpe diem have to find a place to fight for you can just hold on the site but there's always a risk affiliated with it yota has one down towards spawn and he has a freebie too many angles to worry about and looking the wrong way is a t but walco has the reply so now they see t split they know the position on one and they can suspect where it is exit finds it the split successful both frags connect and now 12 is where we tie. And a double up conveniently at their feet can be salvaged into the next round. The bomb plant still means this is likely going to be continued aggression out from Carpe Diem. These rounds coming down so close. It's reminiscent of what was happening to Carpe Diem in the first half, where they were winning the rounds, but the economy never had a chance to really grow and fortify. Now, it does mean that while well, MIBR have brought this close and brought this tied, it, it's far from a sure thing. Any one of these rounds could be the moment that sees Carpe Diem leap out towards match point. Series, not a point. Mm. Don't let MIBR get there. Next. Making some inroads towards mid, but a smoke will slow them up for now. They'll leave long alone. As I say that, though, Walco starts to sniff, and, well, his sniff is full of kerosene. He's backing out of there. Room's on fire, and he's gone. So, a slower round here. Every day I'm trying to inevitably feel out where this double up set applies. It has been the linchpin for my BR to work back in. Cello especially impressive and in this round he's getting a bit aggressive over towards the tunnels at risk taken but thus far no punishment he'll just hold that space and now the Brazilians can suspect that maybe something is amiss over towards A. The information in mid is minimal so they can't commit to a stack beyond the three players they already have here. Woody realizes that there's pressure towards the catwalk so his op will repost on that line. No one watching towards long though. That space should soon be lost. Out, Woody. The wild. end is wrong. It's wild that he just falls for nothing in that round. Not even a shot to come off. Not even a connection to be had. They've been pressured out completely. This should just be a save already. I don't know what the read was for MIBR. They that they were so confident that nothing was coming towards long. They had no presence there, and the is late control is, is like, just enough. That's uh, such a disappointing round. That's so odd. They just gave themselves no chance to actually fight that. I, I don't know what was going on with Woody. That's that's bizarre, but Carpe Diem are certainly going to be thanking the lucky stars. The save will come through from MIBR, which should allow them to compete going forward. But, I mean, that's, uh, that's a blessing of a round for a Carpe Diem side that was scrabbling to compete here. I'm not even sure what they're info hopping for at this point, right? Yeah. Come get opt the carnival game. What song is that? Oh, that's the pizza song. I won't hum any more of it. Get DMCA by Big Pizza. Yeah, Big Pizza takes us down. It's that's, over. Uh, I always knew that's what we'd do in Challenger League. Big Pizza. And a Counter Strike killed by Big Pizza. What a tough one. Rip. Yeah, I thought it was Valorant that would do us in. Nope. Big nope. pizza. Stop. Okay, turtle. UMP. Show us your UMP prowess. You got one. In the last map, Marcellus found an opening pick elsewhere, so that's the lurk out of play here for Carpet Team. Once the smoke fades, turtle's going to either look brilliant or very, very silly. There is no real in between. And there's the brilliant. There's one. A little bit of damage onto the second, but MP9, considering it was an up, Literally, you know, MP9, he gets two there. Why yeah, are we buying the up? Probably true. The fire rate would have won him that second frag. 
Okay, besides questionable weapon choices, 4v3, they have an advantage in this round. It might be all, though, they still need to convert. A gap in the smoke will be blocked off by second smoke coming on through. Now exit finds one, the spam down through the smoke, so only two left alive. And still, you have not dealt with Woody. He's up top. The op is in position here to swing forward to Gandalf and punish. Won't be him. Yota instead. The bomb is on the floor. Same outcome. And wins. He's a dead man walking. Shut down in the end. Another tied scoreline, this time at 13. That's the round that MIBR needed to bolster their economy. They took a risk in the investment in keeping it alive, and they win it on out. Major course correction there as well, right? Yeah. Uh, a little bit more focus paid towards the long fight, even if it's just with a player with a dump. If he still gets the kill, that's fine. And Turtle does indeed. So that salvages their economy. That gives them the chance to fight all the way down the stretch. And as we're hitting round 27, we are in the stretch. This this is it, folks. This is potentially it. Carpe diem. They were gifted one round, right, with no focus paid towards long. Now they need to earn some more. They gotta do it themselves. They can't be expecting players to just forget about positions. Gotta be Carpe Diem to find it. Double up is, of course, up. It's been a while since Woody's found much with it, but Cello's been chiming in quite nicely. He has. I mean, both these maps have just been a show for Cello. 22 now found in this one. I think 22 in the previous as well. It looked the best, it though. The light throws of dust too here. Carpe diem need a course correction of their own. Turn their sail in a different direction. I think that's how sailboats work. Do you turn the sail or do you turn the the what's it called the the thing on the back that turns the ship? The rudder. The rudder. Uh, both that's the word in I'm different looking. contexts. Mm. So the way it works is to, to, to figure out where you want to go. Right, you turn the rudder to position the boat, and then you adjust the sails to make the oh, boat to, find, to have to the hit optimal the wind, wind the best, angle. And then it just goes forward off the... That makes sense. Yeah, it, it's basically the same thing as, as airplane wings, right? Physics-wise, it's a Bernoulli principle. Sucks the boat forward. Okay, we have too many big words. Mike, boat time is over. In. It's You're over. Being shut All down. Right. No we'll more talk boat more about time. this later. It's a critical time. round. Woody has the first critical shot. Can he hit it? Yes, indeed. But Yota is lost. And Woody wants to dive back. In. That's a little bit too much. Player comes through. The CT smoke and Turtle holds the line. Okay. All right. Turtle on the site. He's surrounded. Pressure in spawn. There's a pressure out towards long. Now it's just the guy in spawn, and they've been completely overwhelmed, so Turtle does enough. He's the backstop to hold them at bay, and now MIBR have taken the lead. So you gotta stop here. asking me sailing questions right before the hit comes through. <laughs> My brain just immediately switches gear. <laughs> you need to learn when to hold the sailing thought for a later time. We need to talk about boats. It's been so long. Season's just starting now. I want to get on a sailboat. Mike wants to get on a sailboat, and MIBR, they want to get into the upper finals here. Carpe Diem, they've taken the pause. Do they want to invest? You could afford digs and still have guns in towards the next. You could fully go this one, or you could try and force. That feels like the worst option out of the three, or at least the highest risk option out of the three. What's their decision? Couple digs. That's it. A little bit of utility. They try and pick up the pace. They have not given much love towards this B site whatsoever. But they have a good spawn out towards long. They won't actually take it instead. A fight towards mid. But it's a mid play from MIBR as well. They have two players in towards the lower tongues. They read that this would be something towards B. It was not. Instead now, the eight defenders could be in trouble. But that mount is very well timed. There is a smoke to nullify it. But they don't want to go with that pace. So Cello's mm. position now could be massive. He holds just on the other side of this smoke. On the other side of the gap. And look who has to cross over the bomb. Not in position towards this cat play. If they double back, they're dead to Cello. If they push forward, they're dead to Yota. But there's always a risk if this rifle falls. Things get weird and the cap is already knocked one on down. There should be a backstab from the catwalk and he's not ready for it. But down below there's a second player in Shello. He's found one and needs the second wheel grab it on through. So now just the Deagles out in long, left alive, and Walko is alone. Walko will find a shot, but in the 1v3 his HP is low. Sure, a gun can be recovered, but the time, the options, they are all limited. He is encroached upon. Walk down and out on this one. 
Whether it's the rudder or the sails, he will not be able to steer this ship forward, but he'll try. Breaking out the uh, oars at this point. Going to row this thing to shore if he has to. 30 seconds to go, trying to bait out that lurker at flank. He knows that someone's likely there, but they're not giving him anything. 14 bullets in the gun. Three targets to find. He's going to need some snappy shooting. First task, get past this off crosshair. And it's not a task he can overcome. That no. one's a great shot from Woody. Be easy ones, but you got to take those. And that's going to see series point found for MIBR. They pick it on up. Carpe Diem, their last legs to try and save this one. And Woody finally hitting when the time requires. Two kills in the last two rounds to swing that favor to MIBR. Cello has been a beast. He has been a monster in this server. I just want to you thrive hex. Spamming, but not committing. No one dies in mid for the moment, but MIBR does maintain that space. mid push here is an interesting calculation two players grouped up for it are they boosting they're boosting just for a little check on towards catwalk but just as they come off of it that's when a player moves in it is close it is interesting they're not gonna find anything and i wonder whether this gives some false information on over because there's players moving up catwalk now woody's still focused in on this still scoped up does seem that this is the direction that the hit's going to come with 55 seconds left on the clock. They are massing for a catwalk play. Here comes the smoke. Counter Molotov isolates out one player. Walco is alone and forward. Is he dropped down? He's thinking about going for it. Would catch Cello broadside, and indeed he will. Cello distracted, not thinking about it, not getting the comms that that was a possibility, and that's a bit of a disaster now. They're pitching in towards B. This is a fast play, and it's all left to exit the back of the site just trying to survive he's doing work he's putting in numbers but it's still going to be a two on three and into the even B site, that's, that's never an easy ask. yeah they won't i like this call play it for the final round of regulation don't let this buy slip away from you double ops setup has been so big they'll be able to bring it in towards the next round because of this save carpe diem though well played, right? They, they finally put some pressure over towards the catwalk, have a well-timed play to drop down, kill the player, the sole defender in towards mid, and then just an execute onto the site. A bit too big an ask for exit, despite his heroics. All because of a drop from Walco. An effective play there. Maybe a little bit of miscoms coming through from MIBR. I'm not quite sure what happened there in the moment, but obviously Cello got caught completely blindsided to that drop. It's a tricky play. Once you see the smoke come out to allow the possibility, you got to be wary as a mid player. He certainly was not. This looked like it could be a fast play towards D. Utility coming out onto it. Counter util there, though. The Molotov indicates that somebody is, in fact, home, and Carpe Diem will sit for a second here. Playing in the death ball. Is MIBR, they want to make this push over towards the catwalk or at least have the heavier force to hold. Yoda in close, he'll be on the anti flash. Turtle can swing off of that instead. They're waiting, they're primed, and it's the right call. Probably be him in position to move off this one. Maybe they can drop, drop away the flash. Good, but Yoda was prepared. Anti flash for one, and now Turtle is activated. The setup works to find man advantage, but does it work for the game? Yeah, Carpe Diem will try and run back in, but you're right. Cello is sneaky. Cello is a rat close in the smoke, and there's a backstab from exit. One man left, and only 45 HP to work with. Cello will close things out. MIBR will find the 2 to nil victory and cement themselves the Brazilian grudge match in the upper final. There we go, Payne versus MIBR. It wouldn't be NA Challenger League without a Brazilian upper bracket final.